Michelle, thank you for being here, coming to Winnipeg. Uh, can you tell me a little about the work you're presenting for the Age of Catastrophe at Actual Gallery? Sure. And the film, I'm, I'm presenting a film. The film is called Mortgage Lives, um, and the film uh, examines the experience of rupture from three perspectives. Um, it's uh, the perspectives are, are psychological analysis, uh, personal testimony, and the actual event. And so it's exploring the experience of trauma of eviction. Um, this work is uh, one of the um, results of um, work of research that I've been doing in Spain um, since 2013 and continue to work there, where I've been uh, looking at um, the effects of, of eviction resulting from the uh, uh, economic crisis and subsequent mortgage crisis or eviction crisis, um, uh, but particularly looking at um, the way that post-2011 social movements are working um, uh, within, uh, I'm using Spain as a case study, but I mean, there's other examples uh, that we can also look at. Um, and so I've been looking at um, the way these movements operate, uh, the kind of um, strategies that they employ, uh, the type of research, research they're doing, um, how they use social media, and, um, and uh, the different ways that personal testimony um, is being used to collect evidence um, um, and create sort of unofficial archives where uh, official statistics and data fall through. Can you summarize you, the concepts you've uh, used uh, throughout your career? Um, because I, I, I saw your work for um, uh, Transmediale in 2010 when, mm -hmm. when you, you received the, the award. Uh, it seemed to me quite technological, you know, because you were using GPS, and but also there was a lot of social uh, interaction. So, yeah. So is the, is the social momentum the one which is the most important for you? I've just spent some time thinking and writing about that, you know, just wondering how um, previous work is linking to this and what are the sort of ongoing tropes or uh, methods that I'm using. Um, I mean, th I think that there's a great deal of uh, cartography, of mapping, uh, explore, uh, excursive travel, exploration, um, this kind of seeking of something that's, that's in, that follows through um, the works that I've been doing. I think that there's also this, this relation between um, the type of... Uh, the ways that um, information is being used, uh, the types of spaces that are created, um, the way we we uh, look at, create, and manipulate um, different spaces within the infosphere, and how um, they impact, or or um, in the different ways they impact things that are happening within physical spaces within cities, for example. And so I I think that um, through all my work, I've been looking at this relation between. Um, media and you know the media, media or invisibility and visibility, sort of like um, how these two kind of um, uh, experiences come together. So it's like media, uh, space of media and and, and physical space of the, of the city. Um, I think that before it was very much uh, more uh, of oh this is here and then this is there and isn't that inter interesting and what happens if we sort of um, connect them together, and this was all the um, element of locative media, and you know how how that sort of developed as a subset within media arts practice. But I think that um, you know as the years have progressed, these, it's very very difficult to make these two distinctions. So I think that um, um, entering into into the, uh, approaching the works just in those terms has become something that I've set aside. But I think that um, still this ongoing thread of of how one sort of influences other and how they're sort of inter uh, thinking about these entanglements of, of, of all of these different sort of elements that compose uh, yeah. a space, a situation, become interesting, you know, and how, and how they're influencing um, practices within activism, uh, um, uh, sort of radical sort of urbanistic practices, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you deal with many themes, but there are also many transitions. Mm -hmm. uh, in your work, I sort of see you as a nomadic artist as well. Yeah, because, definitely. Yeah, you know, you're a Canadian artist, but uh, um, you've worked in Europe a lot. Uh, you've lived mm -hmm. in Norway. Now you're in between Berlin and Spain. Uh, does that have an influence in, on your work? What is the relationship between 
uh, your uh, you know nomadic lifestyle and, and and the work that you're doing. I think it I think it has a huge influence. Um, uh, in previous works, when I was dealing uh, when I was working um, or, or with surveillance, um, you would have the same. Um, uh, set of tools, let's say, the same sort of method, and I say, okay, I'm going to look for surveillance feeds by walking through the city, and, and so you basically come in with the same toolkit, and then and then you would um, see what you could find. So that what I I think that really influenced um, the way I work now because you would find things that were similar, and then you say, okay, well, you can say uh, this is would be the common visual language in terms of of uh, uh, constructing uh, borders by sort of fr by the frame of the camera yeah. and what they're looking at and and uh, trying to sort of um, uh, extrapolate some kind of meaning from from uh, what kind of images you were collecting, but then seeing uh, some things that were slightly different or uh, I guess it's. Um, Maybe having sort of the same same encounter with something, but but in different in different contexts, and so um, I think that this this running thread of having a ongoing conversation about something, but 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 to but you place it in a lot of different contexts. Yeah. What do you see as your breakthrough exhibition, and also what do you see as the most important project you've done? The most important yeah, project. The breakthrough one and the most important one. Oh God. I think the break. Or maybe they're the same. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think that uh, it's a it's a series of steps. But I think that uh, when I um, oh, I have no idea. I mean, there's different. There's these different breakthroughs. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but when I look back um, at the work I've done before, I, I I mean, I'm no longer interested in it because you know yeah. uh, I figured it out. I I I, yeah. I crossed I crossed that border. But maybe once I. Maybe once I started to do the surveillance walks, mm -hmm. um, and and that, uh, um, and I started to work in a, in a lot of uh, more uh, different places. I think that was one of these breakthroughs of of uh, um, I don't know using so using these means of 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 open myself up to like chance, you know, uh, finding myself in different places, maybe put, putting myself at risk risk sometimes. Um, but I think that the other breakthroughs might be uh, the way I started to to think about mapping um, um, as a, a form of uh, revisiting or reenacting uh, spaces of trauma. So when I when I um, now I'm in uh, Quebec City, and um, I'm doing a residency there, but it's the second time I've been at La Chambre Blanche, and. Uh, and when I received the invitation or proposal to, to come for a longer period of time, uh, the first time I came was in 2006. And uh, what I did was I was retracing uh, the, the space around the security fence where the Summit of the Americas was, which was uh, you know, a global meeting uh, with, with a very sort of violent uh, protest riot that took place, was taking place around this global meeting. So I mean, I was walking around this fence and, and uh, conducting interviews with people and, and sort of meeting random strangers and having them tell tell me their stories. Um, so this uh, this uh, uh, sort of tra tra tracing uh, reenactment pil pilgrimage, uh, opening myself up to to meetings with 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 things and people. Uh, I, I see these as these uh, series of breakthroughs of not some making a work that is specifically particularly profound or the best work that ever made, but but uh, opening up um, these uh, possibilities of um, these discoveries of okay, well, um, I can just push it a little bit more and I can push it a little bit more. I think uh, to the point where I've gone now that where I'm I'm taking quite a, a lot of risks in what I'm doing. Do you think that your artwork has been criticized adequately. Oh, criticized? Yes. <laughs> what is the role of criticism in uh -huh. your work? I mean, has there been a positive or negative criticism? Or, I mean, but is it, uh, have the critics caught up with your work? I think it's always interesting to have uh, something mirrored back. Um, so I think that uh, it functions in that way. Um, I, I don't know, maybe some things I've, I felt that people haven't really um, paid, 
put it put as much intention attention into like Such um, as which things would you like uh i think just describing things within a movement is is a bit uh lazy um but i think that uh uh really sort of looking at what the work is doing and 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 uh a- analyzing what that work is doing Do is you, is more yeah. is 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 something that uh, is a little bit more generous and i've encountered that with some people do you engage in collaborative art practices yeah definitely yeah yeah well, what are those um well Right now, um, because I've been working with with um, the social movements in Spain, um, the works. Uh, well, for example, with the, with this film, mm-hmm. uh, there's uh, I'm I'm the one that um, is um, maybe acting as a witness and 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 chronicling uh, you know chronicling these events, um, but um, it's very much uh, created um, with with the people that I'm, I'm 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 recording, but it's it's with them. It's they're not sort of passive subjects. But uh, um, when I was part of um, this group discussion in Madrid, um, where I was working with a with a research team um, uh, of mostly. Uh, um, uh, well, multidisciplinary, but lots of people coming from social work um, um, and psychology, um, and so us being in the same room and and embarking on on a series of group discussions. Uh, um, as soon as you enter into that space, you're you're become part of something. It's you're not just the person with the camera that's mm-hmm. recording. You know, you you're making a contribution, and and you're also um, becoming becoming part of something. Um, that might or might de- not develop into something further. Yeah. Um, also, since uh, I started to um, uh, incorporate this element of translation in my work, and I think my work has always been about translation. When yeah. you're talking about like you're looking at one thing from one angle and then you look at it from another, I think that's a that's a that's a process of translation. Um, so. Uh, to uh, take take in um, somebody's research or somebody's um, way of um, uh, trying to sort of communicate, um, like in the form of a manual or a book, yeah. and then taking that in, translating and giving it back. And yeah. I see that very much a co- like a collaboration, mm-hmm. because then you're entering into a dialogue with somebody. Yeah, I, I mean, and I would also like to ask you about the role of aesthetics mm-hmm. and, and uh, what it plays in uh, how you know plays in, in your artwork uh, and maybe we can uh, approach that through uh, two aesthetic categories mm-hmm. uh, one would be the category uh, of the interface mm-hmm. uh, because you use a lot of that um, and uh, yeah so maybe you can start with the interface first mm-hmm. yeah can you give me exam examples I mean you've seen some of Maybe you've seen some of my works. Well, uh, you know the the, the the one in Berlin. Yeah. You know, with the, with the GPS yeah. uh, system. And, yeah. You know, obvious interfaces you were using. Uh, it's uh, the aesthetic would be different between you know without it, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, the aesthetic experience. Um, I think that uh, uh, my tendency has always been to uh, not not come up with something new but more about appropriation sort of uh, what is the what is, are the different languages that I'm working with you know mm-hmm. so and, and um, then, like also it's uh, because you mentioned languages that maybe we could also speak about metaphors right mm-hmm. so so your your work does use very specific interfaces but then it also triggers very specific metaphors mm-hmm. so if you could you know connect the two together as okay as well. Um, well, I can give an example of a, a recent work that I, um, well, I started to develop in 2011, and I would say I finished it around 2012, but I performed it several times. Um, and this is when, this was, uh, uh, I think that, uh, like when I started, to, when I did the bus tour in, in Murcia, um, and uh, then we were in Murcia, and, and uh, I was trying to, I was also um, looking at uh, re- reenactment, um, finding places in, in Murcia where um, different events had taken place on YouTube, and then using um, and exploiting the locational data that is uh, connected to the, to, to the video and finding th- these sites, these original sites. Um, then, and 
and then bringing the public back in and and having um, a reenactment of of these performances. Mm -hmm. So um, using um, basically all of the elements that were there, but um, disrupting it a little bit, you know, turning yeah. it or um, um, re performing a hack somehow on 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 yeah. on what is already sort of present. So I think that that's something that. Uh, um, I continue to do is like just yeah. looking at not inventing something, but but um, trying to understand sort of the system system b b under which that particular thing comes together, and then turning it all out or around yeah. on itself. Yeah. I can see your work, you know, as 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 much you know like a commentary mm -hmm. of um, whatever we have in the political and economic situation today, right? Yeah, we have, we've had the you know big uh, global. Uh, crisis of capitalism, you know, mm -hmm. at least since 2008 and after that, a big financial crisis. Uh, but we've also had the resurgence of uh, neoconservative uh, values mm -hmm. um, for the past 20 years or so, after mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher, you could say, you know, and, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan and George Bush. Um, there is, and here, of course, in this country, Stephen Harper. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Um, would you say that this was also reflected in the arts? I mean, no, you know, it could be, you know, in any other, in any. Domain. You mean that the arts become more conservative, or yes, the art, the, the arts, the arts funding, the arts councils, the arts ministry, like is the, you know, because it's a whole system, right? Well, I mean, you whole, you have a whole, have not. a whole uh, category um, of media art practice right now that deals with disruptive networks, for example, yeah. and and I think I would align that very much with. Uh, how uh, contemporary activism works, which which is about redesigning systems, um, uh, and and about sort of participatory democracy. So you can think about like so the public the con commons, and you can think about yeah. um, different uh, collective projects uh, um, that uh, you find happening uh, within uh, within the arts. Uh, within the media arts, yeah. but how how it's paralleled within uh, other practices, so uh, that, uh, per yeah. particularly within um, within activism, uh, yeah. you know, from my experience. So uh, I think that that's not conservative uh -huh. at all. I think that that's making um, use uh, and has uh, developed a, a high level of s sophistication, uh, uh, a capability of of, of of using the tools that you've um, been building up a really comprehensive knowledge over over many years so that you can use them to your advantage. Um, so there's very much uh, the possibility of, of turning the tables on something yes. and say, okay, we understand we're using the same things and but we're using it in a different way. This is what this is redesigning and this is how you this is a this the whole sort of uh, Kind of guiding force between uh, this this whole tendency of movement towards disrupting something. So it has become more socially responsive. I think it's art. become more socially responsive, but these types of practices uh, most definitely far, fall out of arts funding. For example, mm -hmm. you know, if if we want to talk about within within Canadian arts funding, I think it falls super 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 far, uh, far away, mostly because it's so slow. And these kind of things are happening uh, very quickly. Uh, it's like uh, making up something, and, and boom, it's out. So uh, the turnover is is something that um, I think that uh, mm, the whole sort of uh, uh, attempt to sort of following it in terms of developing a, a critical discourse around it or funding mechanisms is is way behind yeah. than what is happening. Because once you once you try and understand or about, um, can provide some kind of a critical analysis of it, it's already moved on to something else. And do you think that the role of, of arts has changed because uh, the advent of technology? Like how much is technology? I think that the fact that in, uh, technology became so infr infiltrated. I, I, I've been writing a lot lately because I'm just finishing up yeah. a critical reflection um, of a research, uh, but. I mean, you you have this whole 
conversation about the post digital right now but uh, and everybody's taking up and it's like it's something you know yeah. that uh, okay we're here now but I think that these things have been discussed for quite a while I'm, I'm, I'm citing a, a seminal text um, by um, Bell and Dorish all tomorrow's parties I think is the title of the text but it's talking about um, this uh, complete uh, misguided uh, vision about um, the uh, just around the corner of futurism that's connected yeah. with ubiquitous computing like everything uh, is not quite working now but just in in a next year or yeah. in the next with the next version everything will be fine uh, but they are talking about uh, and, Gil and William Gibson refers to it as well it's like the future is now it's just not as seamless as we thought it would mm -hmm. be and so everything is just really about this bricolage and everything is really clunky and things like um, there are effects that you can't anticipate and, and it really sort of inf infiltrates like all of the more uh, complex uh, areas of our existence It'd be, with the socio and political entering into you know your love life enter into different social social interactions entering into politics entering into all every sort of facet of social life in in very very interesting ways and so the fact that um, you know, things that are happening in Twitter sort of affect like how people occupy squares and vice mm -hmm. versa is something that is almost too, is almost, uh, almost banal to get into it because it's so much part of the, so, our banal, yeah. like I think mm -hmm. it's. So how important is ethics in your understanding of words? Uh, I think that, um, yeah, I, I think that this, this is a question that comes up a lot. Um, but I think that uh, uh, the question of ethics uh, comes up with, with how everybody is um, working with data now. Uh, you are dealing with uh, you know, millions of bits of data. And OK, I'll, I'll just sort of back off because uh, that, guys, I'm not dealing with that. But, but uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at particular subsets. I'm not, I'm not, this is not about sort of data visualization. Um, but I mean, we are encountering this situation where you have this this overabundance of information and all of this sort of digital trash that we're dealing with, um, that, which is like the aftermath of of um, these these uh, these kind of heydays of of uh, the di of, of of what happened in the '90s, and yeah. and the next step is is. Uh, uh, how do we make sense of all of this uh, overproduction of information? Yeah. So you have a lot of a lot of different people, a lot of different practices that are, that the the their sole the focus of 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 their work is about looking at these data sets, looking at these aggregations yeah. of stuff, and trying to sort of see what meaning what meaning can be extrapolate from that. So once you're sort of once you're not thinking about a single set a single piece of data, but how it sort of Operates and, and how it functions within a, within a, as a as a as a whole as an aggregated unit, and then you then this idea of ethics in terms of um, uh, in terms of copyright in terms of ownership it starts it becomes very very hard hard to just kind of hone in on that particular element of that. So I whenever the ethics question comes up to me, it's it, the ethics is related to um, well how uh, um, how do you sort of square off, with, square up with with uh, working with other people's information mm -hmm. without their knowledge? And it, have art institutions become more open uh, to, you know, technological art or you know the sort of art that you are doing, or do you still, you know, uh, the the big institutions, uh, art galleries? Uh, well, uh, it sort of depends on the art gallery. Uh, I I was in a, a exhibition called Hacking the City at a large museum in Essen, um, which was really open um, to. But the ha but but uh, the exhibition was about social hacking, so which was interesting. So uh, hacking would be anywhere from guerrilla gardening to the type of work I was doing. So the work was commissioned, funded, and exhibited. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that that would signify, you know, like no. But what no I place. found interesting is that it was all coming together uh, uh, it, uh, um, under sort of under sort of the practice of hacking 
and, and hacking can encompass a lot of different things mm -hmm. and not necessarily technological hacking or some kind of hacker breaking into somebody's uh, computer or whatever. Uh, it was about uh, redesigning, about recustomization. Mm -hmm. And so that and that could encompass a lot of different uh, practices and fields. So I think that um, it's also a shift that it's not necessarily that you see curated shows that are, is just about a certain type of media art or is, is, is super technologically driven. Some are and some are not. Mm -hmm. But I think that was more interesting when you when you have like a, a mix yeah. of, of, peop of, of things happening because, because of what I mentioned before, yeah, that technology is yeah. already so integrated uh, into so many different practices. So where do you see the biggest experiment in the arts today? In the arts? Yeah. Uh, is it, does it happen in this artist studio? No. Is it commissioned by the arts institutions? Is it like who drives it? Where, where is the experiment? I, I really think that uh, the, the um, smaller, uh, I think that uh, the biggest, uh, I, think, I think that the most experimental things are happening are, are within activist communities. Uh, I think that there's like a huge uh, and interesting sort of movement in uh, data journalism, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that um, what it, it, within media arts practice, I think that uh, um, what uh, this this whole area of, of people that are working within uh, um, I guess it would be like new surveillance practices then. I don't I was trying to think about a, a, a larger umbrella. So like um, people like Heath Bunting. And no, I mean I I think that's th some things that James Bridell is doing is is quite interesting, and then there's Trevor Paglin, oh, and yeah. then and then there's Laura po Poitras, who is also like in the journalistic sort of area as well. I, I think that anything that is uh, uh, using. Um, these uh, very sort of hacker, I keep on bringing up the H word, but it's uh, just uh, looking at ways of poking holes. Uh, how do we evaluate it then? Like, what is the value system? Is it still the Western art canon? No. What is it? Like, I think it's more about what you can do for society. <laughs> like, are you being a use, a use of something? Or are you just okay. hiding away? I think that practices that spill out and... and uh, uh, become so, so to such a extent that you start to wear uh, many hats, <laughs> become much more interesting. That you know you sort of end up somewhere and uh, yeah. you bring in your tools because everybody you know you develop a certain way of working and a way of um, making those links and arriving at conclusions. You know, and that's uh, I think the artistic practice uh, and methods are very much based on at least from my way of working and the things that I've built up um, through mediation mm -hmm. and, and also to be able to um, maintain a critical distance from something. So I think those are the tools that artists bring into situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the exciting part is like when you when you just kind of land, your, land yourself in other places so that uh, the dialogue is more yeah. amplified. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have an, you know, Ample dialogue now with the exhibition, yeah. Age of Catastrophe. Yeah. You know, you're, you're working there as well. Yeah. And, uh, well, thank you very much uh, for being a part of this interview. I look forward to uh, hearing you talk tomorrow yeah. uh, at, the, at the symposium. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Merci et de rien. <laughs> <laughs>